Hello, 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 hello. <coughs> we are back. Week 16 of Scrap Busting with Gail and Melina. Um, some fun little projects this week. Um, got lots of tools out. Um, so let's get started. Who are we going to start with first? Let's do Gail's first because hers is going to be somewhat quicker. And Melina's, there's, I've got several different, um, several different things to make. <coughs> Excuse me. So what Gail did this week was um, she followed another YouTube creator, Kathleen Mauer, M-O-W-E-R. If I remember, I will um, put her channel in the description box below. Um, another little crafty creator that I follow. Um, so this is me doing Gail's Scrappy Saturday doing Kathleen Mauer's project. Um, so you start with a cardstock base. Ideally, you'd want it to be writable, you know, have some sort of writing surface. So if this is a patterned, um, a patterned piece of scrapbook paper or cardstock, um, you want it to be light enough in color that you could write over it. Now, you don't have to do it with the writing surface if you don't want to, I suppose. It could just be decorative. Same with your um, scrapbook paper that you're putting on it. You want these two surfaces to be writable. So if this is a double-sided paper, um, you either want it to be white or um, back that up. Um, if this is a double-sided paper, then you're going to want to cover these two panels to make them a writing surface. So you're going to fold the one page. Um, you could do them in half. Kathleen, that's how Kathleen Maurer did it. She did it directly in half. Gail based hers based on her scrap. So she would find her scrap. And if folding it in half made something super short, she would fold it like this. And then it would just be short, you know, short on the back. I've got plenty of scraps <laughs> floating around right now. So I, oh, I've got to do something with my pile of die cuts. It's back, back there behind my computer. And I just smacked it with, um, a cord and knocked a bunch over. Ouch, there's a needle in that bag. Pulling out again some of my old uh, threads from cross stitch kits. Go red on that one. So very simple, very simple little project. So again, you're going to fold your top page over. Where my little my little roller went. So I do want this to be centered, if at all possible. So three. Wow, this is two, three, and.
three and a half ish. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna flip it over this way so I can see the numbers a little better, even though they are backwards. So almost three and a half. So one and a half, one and three quarters would be center. And I'm going to go three quarters of an inch to each side. So here and two and a half. On that one. This one is bigger, it's wider. So four and a quarter, so two and an eighth would be center. Now this is. Yeah, so two and an eighth. Then we're going to get our handy dandy little hole puncher. Do I want to get my dies? So center this. I'm going to put this over my marks that I just made. I have a crop uh, crocodile on order. I'm excited for when it gets here. It's supposed to be here next week, according to UPS tracking. I've wanted one for a while, so when I saw it, I was like, eh, I can't really afford it, but. Well, this month. I really couldn't have afforded it this month, but um, it was a good deal. So, April is always a rough month um, for us. Besides the fact that it's, you know, tax month. Our tabs are due on our vehicle in April and our water bill. One half of our water bill is due in April. So the month of April, we put out probably mm, close to $700 on those three things. I'm not going to, I'm not going to use eyelets. I was, I was contemplating. <laughs> So yeah, during during April, our money is pretty much otherwise committed um, to other things. But I said it was a it was a really good deal. Kind of the same thing too. There's a um, an item in at the auction house that I buy from there's an item in one of the auctions. I knew I shouldn't have even bothered looking cause it's inevitable that I'm going to find something right. 
Um, but I did, and I did. <laughs> oh, there, it's almost at the max that I would even contemplate buying it at. So, okay, so three thread, whatever string you decide to use, whether it's baker's twine, um, jute twine, embroidery floss in my case, um, whatever you decide you want to use. Go through the front, around, and back through. You're going to tie this. And I am i don't want them to come apart. You could tie this so that the, this comes off and you could replace it. But, you know, I'm just going to tie it in a knot first and then... Put a bow in it. And make that, you know, make that bow a permanent, permanent thing. Now you have this and flip it up right here, right here. Same thing, flip it over. And you've got a writing surface here and a writing surface here. Now, obviously, when you go to write on this, you're going to, you know, going to need to create a fold there so that you can write and then flip it back down. Same here. Writing surface, writing surface. Fold it down. Just a cute, something cute. Same thing here. And embroidery floss does not make the most impressive bows because there's no no heft to it. There's no substance to the thread itself. But that's, you know, that's okay. Personal choice. And then for me, I would put just a little daub of glue where the knot's going to be. For two purposes that'll secure the knot and make sure that it never comes untied which for me is what i want and it also keeps the bow from flopping around so there is gail's 
scrap busting with me. Um, oh, and do we want to put any decorations on these? Really take anything out, did I? Did I? Did I? I did not, and I not nothing is jumping out at me right away. scissors. Okay, so clearly this flower that I just cut out has a flat side to it. So this is going to have to go on an edge. Like so. But I do want to ink the sides. just want to help them stand out a little bit. I'm still in the market for a laminator. <laughs> like, it's going to be another one of those things where it's like, oh, I can't pass up that price. I just know it. Like I try to stay off of the auction site. I try to stay off of marketplace and all of that um when i know i don't have a whole lot of money disposable income because it's inevitable <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna find something that i would really like to have and since i've got this out let's just go ahead and uh we'll flower these up <laughs> So some slight changes to this particular um, challenge. I'm going to start putting the hashtag M's Scrap Busters in the title. Um, it's always been in the description box below. But the funny thing is, is when I, when I search, when I go into YouTube and I do a search for, you know, hashtag M's Scrap Busters, 
none of my videos show up. So I'm wondering if that's because it's in the description box and not in the title. Um, so I'm going to start putting it in the title and see what happens. So those of you that are watching, if you could do me that solid and do a search for hashtag M's, MS Scrap Busters, S-C-R-A-P-B-U-S-T-E-R-S, -S. it is hashtagged in all of my videos for this challenge. Um, but if you guys could do me a solid and do a search for that hashtag, let me know. Do my videos come up for you? You know, maybe they're not coming up for me because they're mine. I don't know. So this flower has a flat edge on it. Get my glue out here where I can get to it. I didn't bother inking the edges on this because it's light going in against dark. It's not really tonal. I could have still inked it if I chose. Wouldn't have been, you know, any major foul. No party foul. But you could see on this one how much more the flower stands out by being inked. Let's see if I've got a, a label since I still have them out. How about a stay calm? More than one there. And do we want one for here? Ooh, this is very thin paper. None of these words are jumping out at me, <laughs> literally, as they are jumping out of my box. Yeah. 
can't be on a label. Ironically, I kind of like the orange ones. I need to make some more of those. It was a fun little project. Fun, fun, fun little project. My phone just lit up. Got a message up from somebody. And then I'm going to have this going off the edge like that flower is there. So there is Gail's. Get going. Now I gotta decide. <coughs> Excuse me. For the sake of this being the idea book, And you could put it in a belly band. You could put it in a pocket. Yeah, like so. Side tuck. Just realized that it's not glued right there. <laughs> but side tuck. I'll show you from last week how this would work. I haven't pinned or paper clipped anything in this in a while. So, 
paper clip it in and then it's a removable. I'm going to switch. I want the green one up here. I'm going to switch sides it. Switch sides as well. in. <coughs> you could hang charms off the ends of these. You could do a bulb clip and hang a charm off one of the holes. Um, there's definitely ways that you could um, really dress these up. I forgot today was a rabbit show. That was when I said my phone just went off. It was uh, my bestie letting me know show results, which apparently um, was pretty sad that, you know, a show that normally has several hundred entries. She said there was like only 50 rabbits entered and probably half that many humans in the building. It's like, that's pretty sad because that show used to rock. It's one of the only youth focused um, shows in our area. So, but I have my theories. But I will keep them to myself. Okay. Now, Melina. Melina took off on a tangent on other ways to um, um, use tabs. Now, normally, you know, when we think of tabs in the junk journaling world, it's, you know, folded in half and it's used on the edge of a page, edge of a journal, um, edge, you know, tab, topper. We've seen it. Um, we did a, an M scrap buster not that long ago using tabs um, or creating tabs, I should say. So she, what she did this time was creating an alternative way to use them. Where's my other one of these? Mm -hmm. um, I may have to get my box back out because... My second one is not here. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Check my lap real quick. I don't see it. That's all right. It will appear when I least expect it. So I have this box, random tabs. These were um, punch outs from a, um, a scrapbooking kit that I got. I gotta find another one of that color. 
Yellow. White. I'm going to pull them out as I see them just because. I will probably keep grabbing them. See, now I'm almost liking the darker one better. Nah, let me go with the light one. Okay. Set that aside for right now. And what she did, she took regular old paper plain on one side if it's not plain cover it with something to make it that way and doing various um, folds so um, in this case for this tag closure should a gate fold which is simply meeting your two ends into the middle For the sake of fitting all of these onto my journal page, I am going to cut these down. Okay. Or cut this down, I should say. In these tabs, she punched a hole. Uh, let's go with one more. Now I'm going to put them together so that the hole is in the same spot. And it's got the fold because, again, these are, you know, designed to fold in half. So on one half of these, you're going to punch a hole. Try to center that as much as possible. Okay. You have the hole in there. I'm going to put the strings on first. Um, she put them on after the fact, but uh, I don't want to do that because I will then be fighting with it. Sure, let's go with green. For this one anyway. And I'm going to need two. I love that these are shorter threads. I feel like I'm at least wasting less. Now, I have discovered this is called a library knot, which I didn't know. That is so not centered. Fold your thread in half. Go through the hole. Split the thread, bring them through, pull it tight. I didn't know there was a name for this. <laughs> she called it a library knot, and I was like, oh. So strings on, and as always for me, not everybody does this. I just put a little dot of glue on the back of that just to make sure the string does not come loose.
And because I am using embroidery floss, I'm going to tie a knot at the end. Help keep it from fraying. I'm going to take time to um, twist it. I'm like, what is the word I'm looking for? So this is two and three eighths. No, three and three eighths. So one and a half. And one, two, three. Not super precise here. I'm just trying to find roughly. Roughly the center. Now if you're going to ink, ink now. Because doing so afterward would be a pain in the katushi. In fact, I should have inked these even before I put the string on there. to get rid of that white. The white core, you know. And then you can choose to ink your page or not. Inking, as always, is a personal preference. Not all crafters do it. In fact, um, Rachel at Roxy Creations, she doesn't ink at all. Now, these are all going to be glued in and not used, but some people will even, um, you know, come in because... Again, this is going to be a writing surface. You know, so you can come in and ink the insides here. just to give it a little something, something. Okay. Now, you then take these, and because of my, the size difference, I'm only going to set offset this very, very slightly. From that center fold down to the edge, you're going to apply your glue. Whoop. Okay. Same on this side. I totally inked the wrong side of this. Okay. 
Oh, well. Again, from the fold down. Now, this is where it gets tricky, is in trying to line these up. And then you have this little gatefold. And again, I'm securing it in a knot. These will go in the idea book. They are not going to be used. So I don't have to worry about not being able to untie it, but in regular use, you would not double knot that because you want to be able to open this, obviously, um, to be able to use them. I should have tied the knot after the fact. I will do that on the next ones. Come on. Ridiculous. <laughs> Here's one. So not even. <laughs> Next one she did is made in a little envelope. So you're going to fold this up a little more than half. Punch a little thumb pull here. Centering if possible, punching if possible. Paper is thin, so my punch really didn't like it. And then this, I'm going to fold down over the top of that. Looking for my corner rounder. Wait. Wait, back in the corner. <laughs> How ironic. My corner rounder is back in the corner. Just around these edges, these two corners here. Put some ink on this. Turn this into an envelope. We're going to glue here and here. 
here and here. Secure those edges. Yeah, my fabric tag this this bottle is like very um stringy. Like I'm constantly having to like you know, I go to put it back in and there's leaves a string. It's like string cheese. Now, ideally, you would want this, the fold of the tab, to line up with the fold of your um, your envelope, but it's a little tall for that, so I'm going to go down a little bit just so I can center it. That's a personal choice. And again, we're going to put a hole. <clears throat> For this, It's amazing how dusty. Let's get some little string here. This is off a Hindi rug. I took apart a long time ago. Chindi, not Hindi, Chindi rug. Again, just kind of bringing that in. I'm going to tie this in a knot, I mean in a bow. my sewing scissors out it's part of the problem is that these scissors these scissors i use for fussy cutting so um they're used on paper anybody that knows anything about scissors knows that once scissors are used on paper they're pretty useless for fabric and as you saw even cutting thread Embroidery floss was a challenge. So with this, I'll put a little dab of glue, make sure my bow stays tied. While that dries, I'll show you. This is some difference. See, see how vibrant and hot pink this paper is? Well, what I did was I covered it with the white part of a napkin. Like when you separate your napkin into layers, you get the white layers. Um, I glued down the white layer, crumpled it up. I didn't worry about it being straight um, or being flat or unwrinkled. Um, in fact, I wanted the wrinkles in it. Um, so I didn't like, you know, I just kind of dropped it and then, plump, 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 you know, pounced it down. Left the wrinkles in there and then I very lightly with it, my dauber went over the top and got these little wrinkle lines in it. So you can see the difference in color there. Okay. Now the bow is on the top. So from the fold line down, you're going to add glue. Another string. And 
then again, try to center. <laughs> And then to open your envelope, fold this down, open. Ta-da! There's number two. Number three, this is actually cardstock. And again, you're going to do a, a gate fold. Not even straight. <laughs> Nor is it in the center. I'm going to try to center these as much as possible. Again, punch a hole in the center of one side. It doesn't really matter what color I'm using, does it? <clears throat> this wasn't mine. This was in a grab bag that I got at the secondhand store. Now with this, you're just going to tie it overhand knot in one end, on one end of your thread. Now you want it to be somewhat tight, but you don't want it to tear the hole. And again, you could put an eyelet on there if you so chose. I am choosing not to. I'm off the way extra there. Okay. Now again, this is your this is one end. There's your fold, and you're gonna so glue from the fold down. Line that center fold up. with your pages or the fold and the tab it'd be you're going to line that up with the raw edge of your paper it's not wanting to stick very well there we go and then what you end up with is something that opens writing surface doo -doo -doo -doo. and then to close it you just wrap wrap mm -hmm. and then tuck which is going to be almost impossible 
with this little string that's left. Now, ideally, you'd want your string to be longer so that you can um, bring it down and have it in the center. You can be able to tie a charm to it. Um, in fact, when I'm doing this kind of a wrap, I like doing the charm on it because what it does is makes it so, gives me something to tuck with. Don't really have that option when you cut it too short. So there's that one. And then last but not least, uses two tabs of similar nature. And again, you're gonna gatefold. Yeah. Try to get it into the center. And I really love this paper, but it's been in my stash forever. I like the look of it. I like the feel of it. And I think I've been like low key hoarding it. Because as much as I love it, I like never use it. <laughs> so again, you're going to gatefold your writing surface. And again, you want the inside to be. You want the inside to be writable. Now on this one, I'm actually going to um, round the corners. Part of that is because the corners are goober on this side already. Um, like I said, it's been in my been in my stash box for a long time, so. It has gotten well worn. <laughs> I need to go with this brown one. And again, I'm going to punch the holes ahead of time, string them. Set this aside for a moment. Now these tabs are um, encyclopedia pages. They're very thin. They are double layered. Um, I glued um, two pages together just to give them some 
security way, way back, way back when I first started this junk journaling stuff. Um, I did that. I was um, on a road trip and that was my activity for the drive was actually sat with my glue stick and an encyclopedia and glue two pages, flip, glue two pages together, flip, two pages together, flip. Um, so I kept myself busy on the road trip. All right. So we have our gate folded paper. Make sure these are folded in half. And you're going to put glue on the, the side opposite your string. Okay. Now to this, on this one, you're going to glue this on the back side. Try to center that. Okay. Same with this one. Glue on the side opposite your string. Figured maybe if I flipped it over, it'd be easier for me to make even. Probably not. Okay, make sure those are stuck down good. And so here's your. Gatefold. Da -da 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 Do your journaling. You could glue these down if it bothers you that they flap open. Um, for the sake of this journal, I'm not going to. In daily practice, I probably would just because. Um, it does bother me that they flop around. And again, I'm not worried about these not opening, so I'm going to go ahead and double knot that. Tie this in a bow. in the end of this and again you could put charms on the ends of these instead of just tying them off up to you most definitely for the idea journal I'm not going to because charms are expensive And then I'm just going to trim just below the knot. So look how much better these scissors work. These scissors that have hardly ever touched paper. I've done it on accident a couple times. All these strings everywhere. Close up my scissors because these bubbies are sharp on the end. I've stabbed myself with them more times than I can count always makes me bleed without fail. Okay. So we have gatefold with tabs glued on the front. We have a gatefold with tabs wrapped around from the back. We have this tab opens. Just wrap and tuck. You 
could even do it that way and just hold it in place. And then the little envelope with the flip down, little tabby. So there we have M's Scrap Busters using tabs in an alternate way. you guys all picture for the thumbnail let's get these in the book see how many will fit in the book These tabs are driving me crazy. They keep uh, getting stuck on stuff. So just for the sake of my sanity, I'm gonna go ahead and glue them onto their page. <laughs> this one I don't mind so much from the top, the one loose from the top. Cause when I close the book, it tends to stay in there. Whereas these ones flop out and then they get hung up on paper clips. They get hung up on other pages. These are supposed to be on this side. <laughs> this was the charms. This was the tabs. is getting thick. Okay, so now again, crafter's choice, whether or not to glue these into your journal, leave them as um, freestanding, stuff it in a pocket, under a belly band, however, however you see fit. Just gotta figure out how to get them all <laughs> into this journal. And again, since I already have tabs, I'm not worried about you know things sticking out over the edge here. Strings. Envelope. Obviously, you're going to be able to fold or, you know, close the book. It's not going to fit. Yeah, 
I'm gonna make it work. We're just gonna collage page the page. <laughs> All right, I'm beginning over signature, grab the number 16. Week number six to eight. We're going to date it up here. All right. So there we have week 16 of Scrap Busting with Gail and Melina. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we will talk at you next week. Yeah, check out my Etsy shop, please. Um, brand new. I'm adding items um, as I go. It's a work in progress, but it is there. So we will talk to you next time. Bye.